Hi, welcome to the Chronicles of Les and Mo. My name is Leslie Gray, and today I'm happy to uh, sit down and talk with Troy D. Williams. He's an actor, father, entrepreneur, and man of God. Welcome, Troy. Thank you for having me, Les. Yeah, good to have you here. Um, as as always on the podcast, we try to start out with a with a straightforward question: When did you fall in love with Jesus? I would have to say somewhere uh, right before my teenage years, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we weren't really the traditional family that went to church like every Sunday. Like we went pretty often, but not every Sunday. It wasn't like a mandatory, mm -hmm. you know. And then, um, you know, we got uh, my brother and I, we got baptized. I want to say around the age of seven and eight. Mm -hmm. And uh, once that happened, I think that's kind of when, you know, the awareness kind of came in where I'm just like, all right, you know, I do want to like live. I want to, I want to make it to heaven one day. Yeah. You know, so I think that's where that kind of set in. And then somewhere around like my early uh, teenage years, um, it was a lot of, uh, a lot of ups and downs, you know, mm -hmm. like in my family. And, um, you know, there's some situations that I'm like, man, I don't know how we're going to get out of this, but somehow we did. Mm -hmm. And I think just through that, it let me know that there was a greater power that um, is something that we couldn't, physically get out of ourselves. Right. You know what I mean? So I think that's where I, I was like, all right, man, like spiritually there's something going on here. Did you um, have um, a period of time when you strayed away from Christ or living what we would call a Christian life? Uh, I actually did. I did. Um, I would say, man, high school, I would say between high school and college, like yeah. the, my younger days, man, I was, um, all I cared about was partying, man, <laughs> sports and girls, you know, honestly, like that, that's was, that was it for me. I think yeah. most, most, uh, Christians do that. You know, we had a few people on and they talked about, you know, uh, receiving Christ at a young age and then straying away and then coming back, uh, like the prodigal son situation. Right. And, you know, uh, his father was waiting for him to return and, and was all happy when he did. And I think that, you know, Jesus and God feels that way about us. My my journey was probably a little di different. I did Jehovah Witnesses when I was. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I didn't know that. As as a young boy, I uh, used to study the scriptures or what they call the New World Translation of the mm -hmm. Holy Scriptures, which you know people will say that that's their Bible. Yeah. But you know, for the most part, it was word for word, and um, but the interpretation was a lot different. You know, they. I think they looked at Christ as not being the son of God or, or the, or being God rather. And, um, so that was a big difference, but I didn't realize that until I got saved about 10 years ago. But gotcha. like, like you, man, I was just out there just, you know, before I got married, of course, <laughs> <laughs> let me caveat that. <laughs> Gotta throw that one in there, man, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but as as you as we, you return, did you? Uh, how did you get closer? You know. So um, I, I think uh, you know um, I'll tell you it was it was an incident where I, I was going through a bad breakup. Like this is when I was in college, I was going through a bad breakup. I was having a lot of financial problems, like you know, just kind of paying my way through college. Right. And um, you know, I got really stressed out. You know, so I started drinking alcohol. Um, and you know, I kind of went through like a, a, a dark period of my life. Right. You know, and then like I just, you know, one day, man, like I just kind of had that that realization and that that self that that self awareness talk where I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Yeah. yeah, you know, like I don't need this alcohol stuff to get through this. Like, like because because honestly, when you drink alcohol to deal with problems, you're avoiding where you know you need to be right putting your focus, and that's in the Lord. You well know, said, to well to said. ride you through whatever situation you're going through. Mm -hmm. So um, it was just really um like a decoy you know, or, or avoidance. Right. So I think that was around the time. And I'm just like, man, you know what, man, I got to get my life right. Like I've never been an alcohol drinker like that, you know? So I'm like, this just isn't me. Like I don't, I personally never even liked the feeling of being drunk. Right. I, I don't like it. Like I've been drunk, really drunk, like maybe two or three times in my entire life. And I'm like, why would anybody want to do this? Right. You don't yeah. remember anything. It's like you, you, your, your senses go away. I'm like something bad could happen to you. Man, I tell you, before Christ, when, after Jehovah Witnesses and, be, and before Christ in my uh, late 30s, about, what, about maybe 12 years ago. So, uh, yeah, about 38. Um, 
I was drinking, hanging, running, you know, strip clubs, things like that, and partying at the work with, with the Wall Street crew. You know, <laughs> it was cool to cool to go out partying after right. after you worked a full day. And um, you know, Mary and Mo settled me down, of course. And uh, but before that, there was a lot of running around. But even after that, I still didn't have Christ. She did. But, you know, she calmed me down. But once once Christ entered my life, I mean, you're right. I mean, it's like I don't even drink anymore socially. I, I mean, I might have a beer, but even that, I sit there until it's nice and warm. Right. And it's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> I never was a beer drinker. Nah, yeah. I'll drink some champagne every now and then if we're celebrating, but yeah. that's about it. You know, yeah. just celebration type stuff. Yeah. But uh, my wife, Candace, she's actually kind of got me back into going to the church okay. and all that stuff. You know? Where are you guys going? Uh, Southside Church of Christ. Okay. Yeah, okay. Pastor uh, Wesley T. Leonard. Okay. Amazing pastor, man. Uh, it's over on the west side. Nice. But um, she, it's, uh, you know, she she kind of got me going back to church, you know, and then I was like, all right, man, I like the fellowship and, you know, everything. Um, but yeah, she's kind of got me right back on the right track. Well, I was going to ask you about discipleship, right? Because, you know, uh, scriptures say, do not forsake the gathering of our people. That's why we, you know, COVID was tough on, on the church as a whole. But now that COVID is, is uh, now I won't say it's done, but, you know, it's opened up and people are trying to head back. Mo and I are actually going through a period where, you know, we, we kind of like the online stuff too. <laughs> and uh, but church visiting is, is what we like too. So we're, we're, we're thinking about just, going to visit old church, new churches, and just, uh, you know, um, fellowship with the, a bigger body of Christ. Gotcha. And, and just the ones we see on Sunday. So, but that's always been important. How do you disciple? How do you, do you study on the regular? Or do you, um, you know? Honestly, no, I, I don't, man. I, I pray every day. You know, I pray every day. Um, you know, I, I tell the Lord what I want, you know, and, um, you know, uh, how I want to live the right way. I, I'm more spiritual than like a, a church goer, I would say. Yeah. I'm more spiritual. Like I, I pray to God. I talk to God a lot. Yeah. And you know, um, when I was kind of first, you know, getting on that walk of life, mm -hmm. um, you know, I used to be like, man, how do you talk to God, man? He's not going to say anything. I'm thinking like physically, I'm like, he's not going to say anything back to you. You right. know, you have to get to some form of, of maturity with, with your spirituality to understand it. Then you start to, God, I started to realize God has been talking to me my whole life. Like when I'm I'm about to go and do something stupid, I get that gut feeling that tells me, nah, it's probably not the best. That's him talking. <laughs> That's well put. You know, well like, like you, yeah. so you, you start to realize there's certain things, certain instincts and stuff that happen in your life. And you're like, where does that come from? Right. You know, because me, I want to go and do this. Mm -hmm. So I'm not telling myself to stop. Right, right. You know, where does that come from? Yeah. You know, so you know if you're doing something and then like, you know, uh, one of the things I teach my kids, man, is like when you get nervous about something, I say uh, that that's one of two things. One, either you're about to do something stupid or you're about to do something great. Yeah. So embrace it. Yeah. You know, nervousness, when you're about to do something great, that's a great thing. Okay. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. But that's the Lord talking to you, man. Yeah. yeah. So you and, I, you and I worked on a passion project some time ago. Uh, we titled it Relentless. Okay? Yep. And I thought that that was... Uh, a great title for what I see as your character. What I've, I mean, I've known you for, you know, almost 10 years now, right? Yeah. 2016. Yeah. Well, not, not quite 10 years. Well, my math is way off. But anyway. Uh, seven, eight. Somewhere <laughs> around there. That's close enough. I'm nothing Just without Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> so, um, but regardless, man, I think that, you know, uh, your first, I think Wages was your first project in acting. I'm not sure. But it was it was one of the first. It was one of the first. It was one definitely my first series. My first effort at trying to direct anything. <laughs> and Donnie Crawford, shout out to Donnie. He trusted me, him and Nicole. And uh, I think we did all right. I think we did all right. But we since then, we got a buzz. Yeah. Since then, you you've you've been on several projects. Several projects. Tell me which one was your favorite. Favorite that that's hard. It's hard to say, man. I've played so many different characters, so many different roles. I've worked with so many different directors. Um, I would say probably so my I would say probably my best projects, right? Yeah. Are uh, the ones where I feel like um, I did the work. You know, I, I character development was good. I was very confident in my choices. Um, you know, I was very happy with the end result. I would say the book, False Prophet. Yeah. 
Um, that was my latest film, and that one probably is going further than any other film is going. Where is it? Where is it um, shown or streaming? So we'll have it up on a, a streaming platform here soon. So okay. mm-hmm. yeah, by the time this airs, it'll probably be up on something, and I'll I'll be making a post on social media about All it. Right. So people we'll can check it out. That. We'll be looking for that. But you got a few things streaming already now. Right? I do. I do. Uh, so we have uh, Doomsday Clock, mm-hmm. uh, which was the Watchmen's edict when we first did it. Mm-hmm. And that was actually, uh, that that film will always be special to my heart because it was my first lead role in a feature film. Mm-hmm. And that was when I had just started acting, you know. So I always have to, um, I'm always grateful that, um, you know, the writer, director, Brian Boykins took a chance on me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so it was, that one's up on Tubi, Amazon, Voodoo, is it? YouTube rental, like it's on like a lot of different platforms. How do you feel about that being a measure of your success or a measure or how you measure your career, the, the path of your career? As far as, as far as what? Like success. I mean, like I'm progressing, I'm, I'm moving forward. When you see things on Tubi, when you see productions, number of projects, what do you yeah. feel like the arc of your career is moving? So, Getting getting distribution to be on a platform doesn't necessarily make me feel like it's progress. Okay. okay. Um, I, I feel like I'm at a point now where everything I, I'm doing should be, that should be the goal of it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's kind of like a norm for me now. Mm-hmm. Like it needs to be there. But I have some stuff on, on platforms that you never hear me promote. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's a reason I don't okay. promote them. <laughs> so it, like... I feel like anybody can kind of get stuff on a platform. It's, if you have the right channels to go through, you know, it, it, some stuff isn't hard. So I, I wouldn't say that. I, I would say when I when I kind of sit back and like I said, I'm I'm my biggest critic personally. Okay. So you you know, man, I'm like a stickler for this. Like when I look at something, it's like I critique the heck out of my stuff. Yeah. You know, so when I look at something and then I have it, the, the critique start to go, you know, they start to decrease, you know, lower and lower. It's like, okay, I'm... So it's more so seeing the growth in my progression on film and okay. like just just the confidence, um, the storytelling, like I said, just the being sure in the choices and so confident in choices and being most importantly, being present in every moment. OK, you know, and making sure I, I, I thought everything out. So sometimes some creative juices may flow where you may instinctively do something. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it comes in there. And you're just like, man. You know, but you don't want to get in your own head. And I'm just like, sometimes you just take a chance with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, if the director likes it, they like it. They don't, they don't, but at least you have it. But sometimes I've learned to trust my instincts. Have you have you received good and bad criticism? Oh, yeah. How do you deal with it? How do you deal with the bad criticism? That's probably more interesting. The good criticism, you probably go, man, okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Bad criticism? So, so bad criticism, man, it's, it's a part of life, you know, like, like, so me personally, like I said, being an athlete up to this point, like, I mean, when you're going to play on the road, you play away, like, I mean, you're used to that. You're going to get, you know, hecklers that are going to, oh, you suck and all this stuff, you know, so everything I've done, I feel like it, it's always been like a high level of having to succeed. Mm-hmm. You know, it's always been a high level of having to succeed. So it, it, it's kind of always been like life and death for me. So I'm not new to that, right. you know, so. My thing is, it, when the, with the negative and the bad feedback you get, I'm like, is it constructive criticism or is it just someone hating? Gotcha. You know, and you kind of got to be able to decipher those because some people, they're just jealous. Right. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're just jealous. And, you know, one of my all-time favorite movies, Boogie Nights, he said it, <laughs> he said it in there. He was like, man, jealousy will get you nowhere. I'm going to keep rocking on. <laughs> It's like, hey man, you tell them, man, you tell them. <laughs> so that that some people are jealous, you know, and you're gonna get a lot of that because one, when you when you become an actor and you you have something on TV or on a platform, whatever, first thing people think is that you're rich. Okay. They don't understand the difference between the independent market and and the, the big stage. Right. You know, they don't understand that. Major so they think you're pitches. rich. Yeah. Yeah. They think that you don't have any struggles in life. And they really want to be what you are. And they think that they, they, think they can do better. Right. They don't realize that you do train, you train for this and stuff like that. So you have the haters that are just going to say stuff. And then some of those people, they really just want to get a response from you. Right. Like just, to, they, just so they can feel important. Right. Hey man. Okay. You know, all right. Troll, trolling is a strategy. On trolling is a strategy, media. man. Yeah, it's a strategy. Yeah, yeah. But when I get constructive criticism, you know, I, I like to, I, I take that in because I'm able to use that, you know, as I move forward and do like, you know, other projects or whatnot. Cause okay. some like, like my wife, Candace, man, she's like my biggest, like, you know what I'm saying? She's, she, she keeps it 100 with me, man. Yeah. I, I love our relationship. You know, we, we have that vulnerability where it's like, Hey, let me know. Biggest supporter and biggest critic. Biggest supporter and biggest critic. Yeah, man. 
And she don't want you going out there looking busted. Nah. <laughs> so she's going to tell me. She, she'll tell me straight up. So, yeah. I mean, like, I, I have a lot of people, though, in my corner. I mean, you even tell me. You know, you you told me, like, some things. You're like, why did you do this? Why did you do that? <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, well, what did my performance look like? You know, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. Was, I, was I on point, you know, because you, you, you know, you work with me so much, like, yeah. with, with self-tape auditions and. You know, we spend a lot of time, you know, doing stuff in yeah. front in front of the, the camera. So yeah. one of one of the best, you know, experiences for me is, is is working with you. I'll say from a creative process, right? We we take the time to even for self tapes, right? I mean, it's, you, some folks can look at it like it's a self tape, right? But at least from behind the camera, I'm like, well, I'm just going to try to make it look good, make right. it make it lit right, add some more equipment. You know, you know, you show up. I probably got. Some new equipment. <laughs> Me and Amazon go way back. <laughs> but but a lot of it is, you know, put in place because of the things that I have experimented and learned through our self-tapes. You know, it's like, let's try to like this differently. Let's read the script. And I know you can't do a lot with a self-tape, but it doesn't prevent us from trying. So that's been helpful. Oh, you said something about Boogie Night. <laughs> and, and I know we movie buffs, right? Now, I like Boogie Nights because it was well done back in the day, especially when you're young and you ain't got Christ in your life. That's what, right? But as, as you mature and you understand the creative process, I, I agree with you. Um, there were some definite stars in there. I think Mark Wahlberg was the lead character. Right? He got all types of award nominations for that one. And he was, he was early in his career at that he was. point, too. Yep. And he's went on to put out some great... Well Set up his whole movies. career. That's right. Set his whole career up whole from that point career, up. Right? Yeah. Burt Reynolds, of course. I think uh, he did get an Oscar for that one. He got an Oscar for that yeah, one. Yeah. Smooth so, with it, man. He was so smooth with it. There was a lot of uh, well-named actors in that. And the story was good. Even though it was about the porn industry, it was, it was, it was true. And there was a lot of stuff going on back in the day. Like that. So, but some other movies um, that you like. I mean, what's your what's your genre that that really stands out? I like action movies, uh, dramas. Uh, strangely, strangely enough, I do like rom coms. Like, <laughs> listen, man, no, Notebook. <laughs> hey, man, people sleep on the Notebook, man. Actually, I like that movie too. Man, I ain't going, that movie made man. me cry. Man, listen. <laughs> That, that, it's well acted. It's well acted. <laughs> it was just a great love story, man. I'm like, I, I really liked it. Do you pick up any tips and tricks and, and and lessons from movies and things? I do. Yeah. Yeah. I watch the way I watch movies now is completely different from when I watched before I was an actor. Yeah. I'm always studying. You know, I'm looking at lighting. I'm looking at certain things that actors do. I'm looking at like what is their face giving off when they when they're close ups. You know, because you never want to be just sitting still, like like waiting for your, your screen partner to give yeah, a line. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. there's always thinking. Like, you can see they're deep in thought, and it, it looks so much better on camera. So, I think, uh, I, just, I just learned, man, like, just being more present in the moment. That That's what I pick up when I watch stuff. Mm -hmm. And I see who does it better. I'm like, oh, what did this person do here? What did this person do here? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I, I, I study a lot now. Good. Good. I, I mean, we both think that any anything that you consider your art, is, is well worth putting the work into. Right? Absolutely. And that work ethic that is what's part of the whole Relentless title that we named our our, our passion project. Right. And, um, you know, so that's always been my title for you. It's like, hey, man, if any project come up, let's name it Relentless. <laughs> Relentless 2 or something. <laughs> I love that name, man. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strong name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the thing that I wanted to, what I remember about Relentless was the shot and the, the scenes that we were doing with your sons. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right? They were... They were super young. They were like, I, uh, I think Troy was, was maybe about six, seven? Maybe. Somewhere around there. Maybe right? seven. Seven? Tyson, Tyson was so five or was four. like eight, eight and five, maybe. Eight Somewhere five, like that. Something like that. Eight and, and five. Man, so what I remember about that day was the drills that you were doing with them and how... You were giving them instruction with love. That was the key, right? You want right, to beat right. them up. Don't do this. Don't do that. And you see some parents will do that. They'll be more critical or just try to tear kids down in order to build them up. But you weren't doing that at all. I, I have to commend you on that. But the, the scene, the thing that we got on tape is that Tyson had tried to catch the run the route <laughs> like about five or six times, right? And he was ready to give up. 
you talked to him and then you ran it again and he caught it. He caught it, yeah. Caught it. And yep. then he, when you came back into your arms and it was like, bah, bah, but you gave it a little dance. <laughs> that, that was a good scene. But now they are, how old are they now? Uh, 14 and 11. 14 and 11. So so was uh, Troy's in high school, first year? Yep, freshman year. Tyson, Tyson just went to middle school, sixth grade. And, and Leah. Yeah. Leah is in first grade. Now, so. of course, I got to throw in the little video that I saw the other day when she was beating up the, <laughs> beating up the, the she, she tore into him. I was like, oh my God, what are you, you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> I said, my baby girl got those hands, man. Yeah, she put the hands on the, the hands. hands, which was <laughs> adorable. <laughs> now, the first time, you know, and I look at her because it throws me back to the to the pregnancy pictures we had took him back, taken back in the day. Right, right, right. And they were small, and she was just in Candace's belly. And, and now I look at her, I'm like, damn, time has passed for us, man. Time has passed for us, but in good, good time. So I guess what, I, all that to say... Um, how were you instilling that work ethic, that relentless energy into them? So I think um, I'm a big person of, of being an example, leading by example, right? Yeah. So I, with my kids, I don't really have to say much to them because they see what I do. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it, they, they see, like, I don't make excuses, man. I just make stuff happen. Right. That's it. So I think kids seeing stuff, they pick up more by doing that versus you telling them to do something if you're not doing it yourself. Right. You know, like that, that's the biggest thing. Like when it comes to parenthood, like you need to be the example. Right. Like, like my kids don't have to look outside of the house to find a hero. Right. You know, because I'm. I like that. I like that. Yeah. They, like the hashtag that, man. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't have to because they know, they know that I go harder than most people. And they know that the one thing about me is I'm going to love them unconditionally. Yeah. You know, they, they're not afraid to make mistakes when it comes to me. You know, they don't walk on eggshells. It's like, hey, man, I want y'all to live life. You're going to experience some things. Yeah. You know, so I'm like that dude. Yeah, yeah. How, how is, um so so we've known each other since 16, right? So about seven years have passed. How has um time creeped up on you? Do you have to work in a little bit, a little harder, longer? What do you, what are you feeling as a... For almost approaching 35? I don't even know how old you are. No, I'm approaching 40. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I appreciate that, Liz. I'm gonna, I'll shoot you that $20 here. I'll shoot you that 20 <laughs> No, I'm 38 years young, though, man. Okay. 38 years young. Yeah. I would say uh, physically, man, like, it, it's harder to, um, you know, I was in beast mode shape, man, like, like, seven years ago when I started my career, my, my metabolism was through the roof. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, I could eat somewhat good and still have a lot of cheat meals and it wouldn't make a difference. Yeah. Now, man, I have to really be conscious about what I'm eating. Right. You know, like it, I, I, I don't know. I've these past couple of years, the pandemic really set me back when the gym shut down and everything. Yeah. yeah. I was like, man, this is hard. And mm -hmm. when you, when you gain weight and you're trying to lose it, it becomes harder the older you get. Yeah. yeah. It becomes harder. So I would say that's really the biggest difference that I've seen in seven years. Mm -hmm. As far as with the craft, I mean, I feel like I've, I'm at, I'm at the top of my game. Okay. I'm at the top of my game because as you go through stuff, they say like as you, actors typically become better the older they get because they go through more life experiences. And it's true. You know, I've been through some crazy stuff. Yeah. I think we all have. You know, the whole world went through crazy stuff, you know, during the pandemic. And I think uh, me, I'm fortunate enough to be in, in an industry and in a craft where I could use that, though. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it, it becomes therapy for me. Yeah. So... Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, we, we try to blend in uh, conversations about God, creativity, film. And I know that uh, your, your company is, is called? Thoroughbred Films. Thoroughbred Films. And you're using that vehicle to produce different projects and things. Absolutely. What are some of the projects you produce through? Uh, so the Relentless that you were just talking about, um, yeah. that's uh, uh, that was partnered with uh, Leslie Gray Photography on mm -hmm. that one. Mm -hmm. um, we have A Positive Outcome, which was the first short film that I produced. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have, I'm going to be doing my first feature. The goal was to do it this year. Mm -hmm. um, however, with everything that's going on with the strike, yeah. Hollywood, mm -hmm. a lot of funding sources are kind of on hold right now. So uh, we may, obviously, we may have to push that one back until the strike ends. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to make sure um, I'm not about like rushing projects. 
just to get it done, you know, I, I want to make sure we do it the right way. Mm -hmm. And I know this film that I'm trying to do, we're going to make history with it. Mm -hmm. So we got to make sure those resources are in place. Oh, awesome. Awesome. So a little synopsis about what it's about, or you want to save that for... I can, right just, I can just tell you the genre. It's a, it's a gangster film. Gangster we're, film. we're going gangster. Okay. All right. All right. And then, oh, I forgot to uh, mention uh, Limelight Conversations, which mm -hmm. is also um, my uh, TV show where I do interviews, mm -hmm. interview very interesting people. That's also in the Thoroughbred uh, Films brand. Good, good, good. I, it, when that comes about, you know I want to be a part of that. <laughs> uh, we, we're part of the first season, so we definitely want to be uh, a partner for that. Absolutely. So, um so uh, tell me about uh, your, your, your family, your brother, your mom. They all, everybody all good? Everybody's doing good. Yeah. yeah well, your brother, I think he just celebrated a birthday too, right? He just turned 40. 40? Yeah. Uh, what was that, yesterday? Oh, yesterday. Okay. Yeah, we'll be celebrating with him actually on Monday. He'll be up here because he's, he's up in Georgia now. He's up, he moved? Yeah. Oh, did he? I didn't know. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, so, so he just moved up there. Uh, you know, he's a truck truck driver, so right, right. Uh, great opportunity up there. Mm -hmm. Um. So, yeah, he'll be here on Mon what's that? Monday. Monday mm -hmm. night we'll be celebrating. Awesome. So that's why my mom is here this weekend, so we're all going to do something nice for him, yeah. special for the big 40. Yeah. He doesn't want us to do anything for him. <laughs> he's, he's just like our father. Yeah. Like they, they don't like celebrating none of that yeah. stuff. It's like, oh, it's just another day. No, yeah. it's not, man. Yeah. Be blessed. You know so, what I'm saying? Be grateful. So what's next? You got you got um a project that you're putting on hold for because of the strike, out of mm -hmm. respect for the strike, right? Because I mean, um you don't really have to not act because of, but this is almost like a respect for for the striking, right, yeah. right, right, right. I, I mean, I stand, I stand with SAG and the union on this. Yeah. You know, um, the the things that uh, we're striking about, um, you know, it, even though I'm not a part of the union, it still affects me and it affects my future, right, in the craft. You know, so um, you know, uh, obviously, what are some of the things that they're worried about? So, um, you know, and don't quote me on this sure, uh, sure. specifically, but I know the the main two things that I, that I've read about are um, you know streaming platforms and and how they're not paying out residuals um, to actors, you know, once, uh, once like some of those like major network TV shows go from the network to the streaming platform and people can binge watch them. Mm -hmm. They're not giving like actors, like re the residuals are dropping down really low. Gotcha. Yeah. So like, that's something that they want more pay mm -hmm. uh, for the actors to the streaming platforms. Cause mm -hmm. I guess that's considered new media. Yeah. And the last deal that was in place, I don't think that I think Netflix and all this stuff was like kind of new to the game. Yeah. You know, so cause you'd have to go back years. So that's one of the things. And then uh, also artificial intelligence as well, um, which is becoming um, a part of, you know, society is already here, but it's becoming a big part of, um, you know, the uh, the movie and the, uh, you know, TV and film. Industry. I, yeah. I mean, you can see out there, there's some uh, videos on TikTok or Instagram where the actors likes likeness likeness is being used in. Uh, video streams, right? You, you see, I seen one where it switches from Sam Jackson to Denzel yeah. to, to uh, Morgan Freeman and stuff. It was a, a relatively new one, but I'm like, dang, this this is. They should be getting paid for that. I know when I yes, they so, should be getting paid yeah, for that. Yeah, so that's you know copyright um, uh, likeness protection uh, terms like that. So I do understand what you're talking about, and if you're if you're worried about if you're not there now, you're right. I mean the any actors coming behind us, yourself included, is have to be concerned about those things. So I get it. I absolutely get it. So um, as we close out, I just want to I just want to ask you how is when you look at your career, your acting career. I know we haven't touched on your day job. But we ain't, we ain't really considering that. Oh yeah, we don't long term, about right? <laughs> <laughs> Us entrepreneurs, we don't talk about that. Right? <laughs> so we're talking about family. We're talking about, um, you know, career, all those other things. And how do you see your growth in Christ as a uh, foundation, a support mechanism in, in pursuing all those other things? I think it's a very big part of my life, man. I, I, I stay prayed up, you know, um, I'm very, um, I'm very fortunate to be here today. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you that, um, you know, a few years ago I, I got in a really bad car accident and, you know, um, 
I, I probably shouldn't, I probably shouldn't have made it, you know, but I guess, you know, God had a bigger plan for me, yeah. you know, and, um, you know, just kind of going through things like that, you know, I kind of, um, you know, envisioned the world, envisioned a world of me not being here with my wife and kids, you know, and, and, you know, I'm just like, man, God is so good, man. You know, so I, I'm, like I said, I'm naive enough to realize that all the blessings that are coming in my life, you know, um, everything is like the Lord gave it to me. Yeah. You know, like, like all, like, like the, the, the ambition, the drive that comes in me, like he gave that to me. Yeah. You know, that doesn't just come from like nowhere and me just doing that on my own. It's like, it's a special seed of greatness that he placed in me. And I think, um, you know, we as people, our job is to use the gifts that, that he's given us and, and, and take it to the highest level. Yeah. You know, so um, giving, it, him, giving him praise and honor. Absolutely, and process, right? absolutely. Don't be scared to 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 say it. You know, like that's the thing, man. Like like people know, I, I stay prayed up. I always give all the honor and glory. And what is your prayer for your kids? Man, I just pray that my kids, man. Uh, every season, I pray over them that they have um, injury free, you know, season. And um, you know, I pray they get better. Uh, pray to keep their grades up, you know, because. Me and mom, we don't play with that. Man. <laughs> yeah. We don't play around with that. It's like we 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 preach excellence in everything that you're doing. Um, I know but, Candace. We haven't touched on her mostly, but I know she's an educator. Yep. Right. And you know, and being an educator, education is front and center. Oh yeah. Yeah. We all know as African Americans, is is great equalizer. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 She's very passionate about that, man. She's she's really good at what she does. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. I told her, man, like, just hearing her talk that lingo, man. I'm like, man, you're sexy when you're like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you see somebody that's passionate about hey, what man, they're doing, right. and it's like, man, you just, just use, use one of those big words again. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't even know what that means, but it just. <laughs> it's doing something to me. <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, that's my baby, though. No, that's my baby, no, man. No, no, Super know. intelligent, man. Like I said, you you know, like, they say when you meet a wife, you know, you want to get with somebody that upgrades you. Oh, you yeah. know, like, and, you know, she's been with me as a college student. We didn't have anything. Yeah. You know, so kind of, we just kind of, like, keep progressing. Like, you know, we've been on this journey together, man, from from the beginning. So, yeah. you know, I love How the many years together? Become. Married? Uh, married, we do, we'll be celebrating year... 14, 14 in November. Okay. But we've been together like 16 years, I feel like. All right. We together like two years before we got married, so. Don't matter, man. After a certain number, you just stop counting. <laughs> <laughs> nah, long get, time, long nah, time. I'll get in trouble for that. <laughs> yeah. I'll get in trouble for that. Yeah, she give me that side eye. I'm mm-hmm. like. Mo and I got 22 years under our belt now. Wow. Yeah. And uh, that's awesome. I tell you, you're tired of me yet, girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, you're at the point where you can just say 20 plus. 20 plus. You say yeah. 20 plus. Yeah. I'm like, that's a career right there. That's a career. That's a big number, man. <laughs> that's a big number. Shoot, my friends, Gracia and Larry have been together, what, 40 plus? So, Jesus. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the that's, pinnacle. Yeah, yeah. So God bless them. God bless. <laughs> but they're a good example for us on, on, on every level. So, but yeah. Listen, man, I'm glad you came by and talked to me. This was cool. Hey, thank you for having me, man. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. (laughs) (laughs) All right, we'll catch up to you. All right, Chronicles of Lesson Mo, we're done for this one. Catch us on the next episode.